Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode. This week's free episode. Yeah. You can check out the bonus episode over at patreon.com slash the show. Yeah, heaps of additional content over there. So check it out. Go watch it. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Fro Show. My name is Frank Bank and I'm joined as always by my beautiful co-host, Joe Murray. Hello. And once again, we are joined by a very special guest this week, John Parker Back. Woo. Thank you for having me. Is guys. that how you say it? I feel I haven't asked you. <laughs> is it back? Bach. Yep. Bach. Bach. Ah, like the musician. Like All the right, composer. Awesome. Yeah. See, I say that like the composer, and half the time people are like, like who or what? And I'm like, you're Johann Sebastian <laughs> Bach. Like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, John Parker Bach. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Thank um, you. For having me. Do you want to give a little bio, a little intro? What do you do? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So. John Parker Bach from Chicago, Illinois here. Um, content creator, business owner, entrepreneur, kind of a, a creative Swiss army knife is what I always tell people. So anything oh, they need, cool. you know, I can make it happen. I run a company here called Indoor Drone Tours. Um, and that's kind of the, the everyday job outside of just creating content and having fun. That's awesome. So do you wanna talk a little bit about how you got started, how you got into content creation, just everything? Yeah. Um, so it all started kind of back in high school for me, at least. So grades like, I don't know how it is in Australia, but grades like whatever, eight through 12. Um, and started filming our sports team. So football, basketball, soccer, anything I could get my hands on. Um, I would edit on my parents' computer back home. So I would like, they would be like literally sleeping in their room and I would be like in the corner of their room on my mom's like office computer, like banging out like video edits and photo <laughs> edits for my high school and stuff. So it's always, it's always a funny picture looking back on that. I was like burning DVDs at night for like the soccer team or the football team and stuff. So like <laughs> always just been like a make it up as you go guy, just hustling, um, working hard. So then went to university at Michigan State, uh, continued the sports route, filmed the sports teams there for four years, mainly the football team. Um, and then Chicago, my professional work was, um, you know, working at a big corporation, Comcast, and then started Doula Creative Shop and Indoor Drone Tours are the two companies that I run with my good friend and business owner, Zach. Um, and he was the one who kind of got me to jump ship and start our own business. So we've been business partners for a couple years, but uh, the funny story going back is that Zach and I actually knew each other all the way from high school. So. We've been business partners wow. professionally now, but like I go back on my camera and I've got pictures of Zach from like middle school and high school football and stuff, American football. <laughs> but um, it's yeah. it's pretty funny to look back on it and see where our paths crossed and stuff. <laughs> that's that's so. That's literally our story. Yeah, really. Like, that, like to a T. <laughs> that is the exact same. <laughs> that's awesome. That's so awesome. Like we we met in like middle school as yeah. well, and just have always been doing creative stuff together. Mm -hmm. And now we have our production company together as well. So yeah. it's like that's awesome. How long how long have you guys had the production company running? Um, we're up on like six months now, I think. Yeah, it's, it, we're early stages still. Early we stages. Are. Very cool. Very cool. It's awesome, man. It's yeah. exciting times. Oh, it's the start Very is exciting. always the most fun. Getting that sprint going. Heck it's yeah, great. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Absolutely. Um. So. Tell us a little bit about your origin stories, I guess, with Zach. Like, how did that, how did you come to, how did he come to you and was like, let's start a company? Yeah, so I'll, I'll give you the two parts. I'll give you the high school part and then like the after university right. part. Sounds good, so yeah. Back in high school, we had like a video club, right? Um, and it was like after school hours, you go to the video club and, you know, you could take it as a course credit in a class. So that's where I met Zach is, is we had a bunch of us who were good friends in that class and we were just pushing the limits. We were just... We would ask our teacher, like, could we do this? And he's like, well, maybe. And we're like, all right, we're doing it. And we're like film, <laughs> jumping in the high school pool, filming with underwater cameras and Ziploc bags and just like totally just like <laughs> making it up as we went as like kids and just like trying to – I look back on it, though. We were just like trying to push the boundaries of like creativity. And that was just like so fun because like we didn't, we didn't know any better. We didn't have the business side of it or like any of that stuff. Like we were just creating to create and have fun. And that was like the best part about it. Um, so that's where he met is in that video club back in high school. Um, and he was on the football team. I was taking pictures and videos and making hype videos for the football team. So we got all this footage of him over the years, college, we went different ways. And then when we started working professionally, we both were back in Chicago. Um, I worked at Comcast. He was selling radio ads. I was selling like TV ads, like cheesy TV commercials. And he was selling like radio spots and, uh, he had hit me up and was like, hey, like we should 
like get lunch or dinner or grab a beer and like see what's up like see how you're doing and uh we both sat down he was like let's go to like happy camper or whatever pizza place it was and he's like yeah he's like i think i'm ready to get out of radio and i was like i hate my job <laughs> at tv <laughs> And so he's like, well, he's like, I'm going to quit in like two weeks. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> this is more than just like a beer and like, yeah, we hate our jobs. Like he's yeah. jumping ship. And Zach's always been much better about, <laughs> about that than me. in like the, uh, I guess in the entrepreneurial like business game, like when he has an idea, like he's hundred percent confident in it and just runs with it where it's like, I'm so linear and logical minded that like, I have to plan out the steps. I'm like, all right, like I got this commission check coming next month. So I'm not going to leave now. I'm going to leave after that. And that'll give me a nice little savings in case something goes wrong. And uh, so he's like, I'm quitting in two weeks. I'm going to start working. Like you should come join ship. And so he started, he had it running for about like two months, two, three months. And then I joined over and partnered up. Um, And so I've been partners ever since it's, it's been a great business relationship, a great friendship. Um, and it's, it's worked out better than I could have imagined, uh, since we were sitting there crushing pizza and beer together, uh, hating our corporate (laughs) jobs. So it's, it's been a fun journey the last four years. Man, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Uh, How did you get into the FPV stuff then from there? Yeah. So that's, it's really just come about the last year or so. I mean, um, it's been around the technology. I don't know how much you guys are familiar with it over there, but like it's, it's been around for eight, 10 years and just people wiring and soldering stuff together. Um, I looked at it as a filmmaking tool and as, as we started to work with bigger clients and more corporate clients and bigger deals, we were like, Hey, like this is going to be a filmmaking tool. So end of 2019 going into 2020, I, I bought like two grand of equipment and had no idea what I was doing. Like I had wires like come in the mail. I'm like, this attaches to what and goes where. And so I made 2020 the year of like, I'm going to figure this out and get into FPV. And luckily that's how we met our third business partner who's in indoor drone tours in that company, uh, Ilya FPV. And he was super kind and was like, he, he like came to our office in our studio and like helped me wire my first drone together for like eight hours. Like didn't pay him a dime, like just out of friendship and just good spirit. And he was like, yeah, like I want you to get into the drone game. This would be super cool. And like, you know, similar to you guys, right? You meet other creatives who are just like-minded and good people. And, and that kind of kicked off this, whole last year that has been indoor drone tours and this this whirlwind of business and learning new skills and figuring it all out so it's it's a ton of fun i'm gonna get you guys in a fpv if you're not into it oh Oh, well that was actually that's the reason we contacted you in the first place because we did a section i think it would have been episode 47 yeah um and i was talking about the video that you put up of the um black magic teardown yep and how you were putting that on an FPV rig. And we, like, our minds were blown. Because in our <laughs> head, it's always just been, like, GoPro teardowns. Yeah, yeah. And you just chuck it on a, on a little thing and it zips away. Like yep. a little whoop, and you just, woof, gone. Yep. <laughs> um, that was the extent of it in my head. But, like, seeing a BMPCC get ripped apart <laughs> hurt me a little bit. But the footage <laughs> that came out of it was insane like was that is this something that happens a lot or was that just like some crazy idea that you were like you know what screw it i'm gonna rip it apart so there, there is a blueprint for it I, I can't quite take credit for it there's a guy in <laughs> um there's a guy in portland oregon his instagram handle is straw hat sam uh and he spent like months That's and months handle. like cnc cool. machinery like building out a custom frame for the black magic and everything so there's like three, four, five, like big guys in the FPV industry who like literally will design and manufacture their own frames. And those are the guys that are above the Cinewoop GoPro level that they're building them for Komodos, for Black Magics, for Sony's, all this other stuff. So the FPV community at that level is really tightly knit. Um, So Ilya knows a lot of them really well. So Ilya had been in contact with Sam and I was like, let's build a Komodo rig. Like a Komodo rig is (laughs) amazing. It gives me an excuse to buy a Komodo (laughs) <laughs> and we don't have to tear it down, so I still can use the Komodo. <laughs> so I'm like, Ilya, please, man, like, let's do the Komodo rig. He's like, dude, that's like 15 grand to like get everything we need and the drone and the Komodo. And from a from a logistical side of it, money aside, um, tearing down the Black Magic, the whole point of that is just to keep the drone more agile. So it sits on a much, almost more of like a GoPro type frame. It's about seven inches wide. Um, so it, the flight time is longer. It's more agile for maneuvering. If you're chasing a car or motocross bike or things like that, 
Um, so from Ilya's mind, he's like, we're going to get a better flight time. We're still going to get like 4K raw footage. It's going to be amazing. And I'm just sitting there like, let's build the Komodo beast. Come on. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to come back on this podcast, like end of this year, next year, and then just be holding the Komodo rig here and be like, I did it guys. We did it. We did it. <laughs> we'll be ready. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll have our little black magic rig by then. And we'll yeah. be like, we did it. <laughs> exactly. So Ilya tore it all down. I mean, it's, it's insane to see him do it. He said it was easier than the GoPros. Um, which I found oh, surprising, wow, really? but just because those casings are so big. We flew it last night yeah. down uh, by the lakefront at the Shedd Aquarium, and, like, this police officer came up and everything, and, like, he's like, so it just sits there? And, like, the motherboard is just exposed, sitting sideways. Like, <laughs> the lens ribbon cable just wires up to the top, and he's just like, he's like, you guys are nuts. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. So you'd hope it doesn't rain or snow. Exactly. They're not very waterproof <laughs> drones at all. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, well, that's one, that's one thing that we're starting to do with the production company is like niche down with it. Mm -hmm. Um, sure. and so we want to have our own specialties. Like Joe is an audio engineer by trade and I'm yeah. a photographer and videographer. Um, Love that. and so I want to get Joe and Joe wants to do, I do I drone do. stuff. Um, cause if you can specialize in it, yep. yeah. then you can, you know, really devote the time to that and actually just delve into it as deeply as you can. So mm. One of the things that we want to really get into doing is the FPV stuff. So, but we have no idea where to start. <laughs> Dude, well, you got the right guy. You got the right guy. Awesome. Um, so that's like, yeah, I mean, there's plenty of ways to start. You have a tiny whoop, cine whoop with the little GoPros and stuff. Um, so I could, I could recommend a few good builds for you. All right. We're awesome. keen. We're that keen. sounds great. <laughs> Joe, do you, have, do you have some FPV questions? I'm sure you do. Um, I mean, I kind of have a crazy one. Have you ever, like, badly crashed an FPV drone? Oh, yeah, all the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, they're pretty gnarly. But the, the nice thing about them is they're, they're carbon fiber frames, and when you're soldering them all together, like, they're, they're actually mad durable. Um, so, like, we'll go to the park and fly them for fun when we're not flying client stuff, and we'll, we'll rip around every which way and crash into trees, crash into fences, and just try to do tricks and fun stuff. Um, on client shoots, we, we haven't crashed before, but that's just because we're flying a lot more conservatively, <laughs> and, and that's the stereotypical <laughs> answer if anyone ever asks me. Um, so, yeah. Not on client shoots. <laughs> exactly. Not on client shoots. On personal days, yeah. on Sunday, when we're just ripping them, we'll, just, we'll bring out a table, we'll bring out a speaker, and just there's just like 10 drones. And, like you crash one, replace the props, or just like toss it in the pile and wire to a new one, and pfft, off you go. So <laughs> that's insane. It, it's super fun. Yeah. How long does it take to build one? Um, from the ground up, I mean, anywhere from like four to eight to 12 hours. It kind of depends how intense you want to get with the build. Um, and they're coming out with, they're coming out with a lot more like pre-built kit ones now. Um, the quality can be better or worse on the pre-built stuff, but I've, I've been pretty surprised on a few I, that I've seen actually. And as you guys have seen, I'm sure with DJI, like they're going hard into the FPV space. Um, so I think they're going to have a lot of pre-built kits coming out soon. Yeah, but you'd still awesome. definitely recommend to make your own. Yeah, and only because, and I'm like someone who uses that as a filmmaking tool. So I'm like, oh my gosh, like I want to, <laughs> I just want to grab it and rip it and go. And um, I, I would say it's better to do it yourself because like, when you break a wire or you bust something up, you're going to know how to repair it because that time is eventually going to come. Uh, unless you're going to spend 500 bucks every time you crash one, which would be absurd. Um, so it all depends how, uh, <laughs> how much you want to crash and how aggressive you want to get on the flying. <laughs> well, I guess you're going to learn how to solder then, aren't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I already kind of know, but yes. <laughs> got to get better at it. Yeah, yeah. You'll be, so, you'll be that, good. so you've got your um, creative agency that... Uh, it's doula right yep doula creative agency yep that's your that was your first one with zach right correct correct so that one's been yeah. going on for about four years yeah so what did wh what was the first like year or two of that like it was it was anything and everything um we, we just hustled our whole kind of like vision for the company was to be a social media agency so our backgrounds we came from like the radio and the tv and like the very corporate traditional media game um and we were like, we can do this better on Facebook and Instagram and making ads like that. So our whole pitch to clients was, hey, like, 
we're young guys, we tried the radio TV thing, it didn't work for our clients, let's take all that ad spend and put it in Facebook and Instagram, and oh, guess what, just like you guys, we're creative people who can make creative ads and things that will perform well. So it was like a social media based agency is what we started off um, as on that end, and it just like, it evolved into shooting for like construction rental companies to like corporate video shoots that were like documentaries that were 20, 30 minutes long, all the way to like beef jerky ads that were 10 second, 15 second, like IG swipe up ads. I mean, we were doing anything we could get our hands on, um, you know, just making a living and, and doing our thing. And business was good for the first two, three years. And it still has been really good, fortunately. Um, I guess the biggest difference with indoor drone tours, it's just more of a more of a like niche product than kind of just this like creative agency offering anything and everything under the sun. Um, and that helped us tremendously, like being able to grow and scale this past year. Yeah. Yeah. We've been really lucky in Australia with <clears throat> COVID and everything like that. Like we have little to no restrictions and that sort of mm. thing. So That's amazing. obviously we're very thankful that we can still work. What has that meant for your businesses? Mm. <laughs> well, one bad, one really good. <laughs> so the, <laughs> the creative agency, like we, there's, I, I always tell people, I mean, like, you know, you always post your highlights to social media and it's always like, oh, everything's peachy and going well and whatnot. But like I told everyone, I was like, we, we lost a fair amount of clients at the agency. Like we lost a lot of retail partners. We lost a lot of like gyms or fitness clubs because yeah. they, they were closed and living in Chicago, the restrictions have been crazy. Um, like they just opened indoor restaurants for the first time maybe two weeks ago and they've been closed for like eight, nine months. So bi businesses were just dead. Uh, gyms were closed for four or five months. So there's, you either had like the, the our mainstay clients, like bigger construction companies and things like that. And the more corporate side of things was fine. But a lot of those like medium sized businesses, they're like either a, we have a ton of business, like we're a grocery store and it's a pandemic and we're sold out of everything or they're like retail gym. And they're like, we don't need you because we're closed and we can't do anything. Um, so from the doula creative shop side, like it, it was rough. I mean, like definitely like gross and net income numbers were down, um, but still scrapped by on that and still were able to make money. And then on the indoor drone tour side, it kind of became this beast that just has continued to snowball. So it started, it started right when COVID hit. Um, the, the slight origin story, if I go off track here is we hired Ilya after I met him and he helped me build my drone. I was like, man, I owe this guy. Like, he just spent eight hours with me in the office, like building this drone for me. Like I got to get him some work. So I hired him to do drone work for one of our uh, like home building clients. They build all like homes and neighborhoods out here. And he did the classic, your Mavic DJI shots. And he's like, Oh, I brought my FPV. Like, do you want me to like get some shots? I'm like, I can't pay for him. Like I, I, this is the day rate I can pay you. But if you want to, like I'll pitch him to the client, like see if we can get more of that work. He comes back and it's basically an indoor drone tour. He's like, except he's zipping. Like there's no formula. He's like race drone through the house. He like comes down the main hallway, up the stairwell, zips the couch three times, like past the chandelier. And I'm like, all right, this footage is crazy dizzy, but this is also like the coolest thing I've ever seen. And then Zach saw it, he called me. He's like, dude, he's like a drone tour. He's like, we just offer drone tours to everyone. And I was like, love the idea. We got a lot to figure out to get to there, but sure. <laughs> sounds great. And that like, and that's when Zach takes an idea and goes and he like, before I knew it, he's like operating agreement. Ilya's going to sign it. You sign this one. I sign this one. Boom. LLC is filed for the company. Boom. We got a website. We got this and he just takes off. So that was like March, April of last year. Um, and then it's, it's, I guess we haven't even been a company for a whole year. We were looking at our finances the other day and I was like, where's our January, February, March numbers from last year. And then Zach was like, we didn't exist then, John. And I was like, Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, yeah, right. That makes sense. I was like, well, we're up a million percent from last year. It looks fantastic. I, the numbers are great. <laughs> Compared to this time well, last year, we're like way up. It's yeah, great. Year to date growth is massive. Cause we haven't had a year. It's fantastic. <laughs> Yeah. So that's wow. amazing. A little bit of both yeah, with that, but it, like you said too, in Australia, like, you know, blessed, blessed to find that solution and blessed to still be able to service the other people that still come to the other agency. So it's been cool. Yeah. Mm. Wow. How did you, how do you like, how do you sell 
your F- mm. like what's your pitch of an indoor drone tour? Because I assume that a lot of people would be like, I don't need, I don't need an indoor drone tour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, there's there's kind of two sides to it. There's like the homeowner apartment owner who's like selling their house, like residential side of things, um, and th- that's more of a volume play from like the creative side. People are like, oh, I don't want to go make a video for like two hundred bucks or four hundred bucks, but the realtors aren't going to pay more than that because like that's the standard rate over here for like filming a house. And so to make that work, that's when I had to go into the editing side and say, okay, how can we make these margins work outsource to the Philippines? What are we going to pay a pilot for each time? And then the other side is like commercial, which is like big office buildings, big apartment complexes. And those are easier to sell because they're bigger spaces, I guess. And it's easier to like fly a drone through there and they can kind of grasp the concept. Okay. I have 20 foot ceilings. I could use a drone, but um, especially launching the new website, like a few days ago, now that people can kind of see it in action, they're like, oh, like, I want that. Like, that's cool marketing piece kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of more of like a sizzle reel sell. Um, and we have a few testimonials from clients who are like, oh, I sold my house in like five days with the tour. Like, it got great attention on social media. Um, but the, the reality of it is every, gonna, every house is going to sell faster or slower based on a ton of variables. Timing, how they priced the house, how they staged it how well they promote the drone tour out. Like some people will be like, John, like, what do I do with it now? And I'm like, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, like TikTok everywhere. <laughs> and then put it on your website. Just dump it. Yeah. It's just a, <laughs> an uphill battle. They're like, how do I download it though? And I'm like, Oh, okay. All right. Back to square one. <laughs> back to square one. So then we made, you know, we made instructional videos for people. And so like, those are all the things that we've been doing to kind of like try to bulletproof the company little by little, I guess. Yeah, mm. making it long term. That's cool. Exactly. Mm. But yeah. And then, so you've got your dual creative agency. You've got the mm. FPV stuff. I've also seen some some automation somewhere yeah. that you've been talking about. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so that that's another revenue stream that we've got going on uh, called Automation Station. Um, and it's a course that Zach and I put together for other creatives, kind of teaching them how to grow and scale their business. So... It's all about taking kind of like you guys are in like a young creative agency and figuring out how to grow and scale it and productize your business. And a lot of automations that are just, you know, someone uploads footage to Google Drive, it sends a message, you know, over to Frank, Frank sends it to John, John sends it to Josh, and um, just a lot of systems that connect to each other to make it easier. Or revisions, for example, Um, like revision softwares that will automatically like text your phone when a revision comes in or things that just like eat up a lot of time in our day as creatives. The other big one that Zach and I always talk about is automating like email campaigns. So having like 10, 20, 30 messages a day just automatically going out while I'm out on a shoot that day and I've still made 30 sales emails, but they're just automated. Um, So things like that or LinkedIn messages can be automated like that. Um, And that helped our business a ton because it used to just be Zach and I like calling the phones being like, Hey, you want a video? Hey, do you want photos? Hey, like you could use a cool video. You're a cool company. Um, so just trying to, trying to help other creatives grow their business. And a lot of the people kind of in that course and program are our friends and it's cool to see them succeed and do well and, um, you know, grow their own agencies on the side. So it's kind of just on, not on the back burner, but like it's kind of just our little thing in the background as we continue to grow indoor drone tours and, and the other companies. Um, but yeah, more de- more details to come. All right, mm. it's it's just something that you can help and share, and it's so it, is it like a, it's a course you said? Yeah, right? it's a course. It's an online course for creatives, teaching them how to scale their business. I didn't really do a good job yeah. uh, <laughs> breaking that one down. I'll send you guys the link though for it. All right, I'm definitely yeah. keen. We'll chuck we'll chuck a bunch of links um, in the description and stuff for people to find you Sounds and find good. that because mm. um, that does definitely sound super helpful. Yeah, it's cool. Um, so yeah. we're, I think we're about halfway. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm timing. about to go check this camera real quick. All right, we're rolling again over here. Let me make sure the audio is still going. Yep. All right, sweet. All right, we're good. Otherwise, I'm going to get in trouble from the audio engineer that my audio is bad. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Don't want to have to use Zoom audio. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's doable, but it won't be great. <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> um, At least actually, in the Actually, in the early, early life of the show, oh, um, man was like right when COVID hit in Australia mm. and we went into like hard lockdown for three months. Yeah. Which sounds bad for us is nothing for you. <laughs> yeah, 
Um, but we did online episodes that mm. whole time and the amount of issues that we had with online episodes was insane. insane. I believe it's just like it, man. audio's gone, video's gone. Yep. One of us has lost a side. It was horrendous. Yep. Oh man. I can't even imagine. I have enough trouble with like Zoom calls. I'm like, what link do I click? Where do I go? I'm like <laughs> <laughs> It's it's too much to think about. It makes life hard. Yeah. I'd like to see yeah. people in person again. That'd be nice. <laughs> mm. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> man, that I I cannot imagine. I like there's just no way to, for us to fathom what no. it's like. Really? Yeah, we there's there's a bunch of people out over here who just like don't don't give a rip about it. <laughs> they just do whatever they want and just you're like, "All right." So, I've gone on like living my life, but I try to be safe and follow the protocols where I can, but not not putting my life on hold, but still wear masks at shoots and everything, and everyone's still a little spooked about it over here. I mean, Chicago's had really bad numbers compared to a lot of other places. California's been really rough, but major cities, obviously, it's way worse. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. What's the what's the creative sphere like in Chicago? Because it, it, was that an intentional choice for you that you were like, I'm going to stay in Chicago, I'm not going to go, mm-hmm. you know, L.A., New York? Yeah, I, I mean... I've always like thought about going somewhere warmer. And when I was working in college athletics, I was like, okay, if I get a really cool job offer somewhere, like I'll go there for a few years, but I have family in Chicago. I grew up outside the city about 45 minute drive. Um, So it's comfortable. It's always been home, but the creative community here is unbelievable. Like there are so many amazing photographers and video people. And I like, I don't even know half of them probably. And I feel like I know everyone. Like today I was out like shooting down by the river and I was like oh yo it's Ryan and it's Z and there's Craig and like you just like run into all these like homies that you like shoot photos with and like Instagram with and stuff so everyone here is really really nice super encouraging very collaborative like that's that's something as you guys know from my social media I always preach like I just I hate the creators and people that are like selfish and don't want to share their secrets or this or that it's like how do you think where we all got where we are? It's like from someone above me being like, yo, shoot it this way, edit it that way. Have you tried this? And like building you up and pumping you up. So I always tell everyone on my Instagram and like when we're out at meetups and shoots, I'm like, I'll just like gas you up. I just gas you up all the time, do my thing <laughs> and just pump it's everyone up. It's all about up. the hype. Just hype yeah. everyone up. Yeah. Like, oh, your, your photo's bad? Still hype. You still get hype. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Just fix it in post. Don't yeah, worry about yeah. it. Yeah, We'll fix it later. It's overexposed. No problem. <laughs> you don't need highlights anyway don't worry about yeah, it yeah let's blow it out it's artsy now it's abstract yeah it's We're great good. just de- it's lo- lower the clarity dehaze it you'll be fine yeah <laughs> Dude, there's some hilarious like memes and stuff going around on tiktok with like photo editing and like the sliders and stuff oh my gosh it's a blast uh, um so creative community is insane obviously yeah. You have a f- somewhat of a following, I would say like a, a small influencer on social media. Have you thought of branching out to like YouTube or anything like that? A, l- a little bit. Um, it's definitely something I'd like to do in the future. Like I always, for the last like year or two, I've always kind of put my personal stuff on the back burner a little bit, just as I've tried to build these companies up. Um, Cause at the end of the day, those, those pay my bills and there's a lot more legacy and scalability in those. Um, from a business end of things so it's you know like you said it's like kind of micro small influencer level numbers but just slowly keep growing it and snowballing it and hopefully it goes somewhere in the future I've I've no idea what anyone's doing on TikTok still like there's followers everywhere but I have no idea what's going on on TikTok Instagram still Instagram Um, so yeah I'd like to do YouTube we're doing some more um, we're actually doing some more like indoor drone tours like behind the scenes type YouTube stuff so we're really trying to get into like blog and vlog style of like behind the scenes of an FPV shoot or like stuff like that, that I wish we would do more. Like we're sitting on one that's really cool from a Red Bull race that we shot down in Indiana actually. Um, and we just can't release it cause it's just been under like an NDA for months. I'm like, yo, is your video yeah. done? And they're like, no, not yet. Not yet. And I'm like, I want to share all my stuff though. <laughs> like, You're like, I want to show. Yeah. I'm like, come on guys. Yeah, I've this. We have the same thing at the moment. We um we shot an album cover um, oh, yeah. a little while ago. I've got all these photos that I just want to blast on social media, but I've no. got to wait for the album to come out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. What what is your guys like niche or what what most products like 
videos and things do you guys do most of the time? Well, currently, currently it's just whatever people will pay us for. That's yeah. the, that's the spot we're in at the moment. <laughs> um, slowly working towards like short form documentary stuff mm -hmm. and and music, I guess, is yeah. kind of the area and we're moving towards. I guess smaller advertising. Yeah. Um, yeah. But music is the music scene in Brisbane is massive. So. Mm. It's it's uh, I would say it's the music capital of Australia for small musicians at the very least. Yeah, definitely. Um, so we've we're doing stuff where it's like we do a combined deal where Joe will mix and master all of the tracks of an album, and I'll shoot a music video and the album cover. Mm. Oh, that's so it's sick! Like, stuff that's like so that is what cool. we're working towards. Yeah, that's yeah. so cool. And you can offer it as like a package service too, so you kind of get all of it. That's exactly. Sick. Yeah. That's exactly. super super cool. And then we own it. them, and then they come back for every single one. Exactly. <laughs> you guys just gotta find that's one. Actually, you gotta find one that goes big, and then you just you just ride with them, and you're good. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. the secret at the bottom of the contract is if you work with us once, you work with us forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are now part of our production company forever. Yeah. <laughs> you have no rights. I'm sorry. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, that's super so cool. So we know about your companies now. Are those your first endeavors, or did you have stuff before that that's failed? Um, those those are the first big ones, yeah. Um, lucky to be successful with those two. Um, as I said, the TV job didn't really work out <laughs> coming out of college. I mean, I was making money, but I just had no passion or pursuit to it at all. Um, but yeah, always just been always just been an entrepreneur and running around doing those things. My mom always makes fun of me because I used to back in middle school I would sell wallets made out of duct tape and I would like yep. make these duct tape oh, yeah. wallets back in the day. If you guys remember those, yep. and I would like sell them to people in the cafeteria. And my mom was like, see John, like you were always an entrepreneur or hustling. I was like, I don't know if I'd call that mom. I sold like 10 wallets, but okay. Like, <laughs> <sounds good. laughs> that is a good hustle story. That is. Yeah. Do you have, do you have any like good or funny hustle stories from right when you were starting the creative agency? Oh my gosh. We got, we got plenty of them. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Zach, Zach and I joke that like one day we need to like keep a journal of this or like go on a podcast and tell a ton of them. I mean, there's there are so many good ones and so many times I like beefed it on a sales call or on a shoot or something or called called people the wrong names. But one of the biggest ones probably was we were in this uh, car dealership. And this car dealership is like the biggest out here in Chicago. They own like 20 locations. We got this meeting. It's the president. It's the vice president. It's the, like four people in the marketing department. <laughs> And we are at this conference table loading up our laptop, right? So I got my backpack, shaking all the hands, got my button down on, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. You run around. <laughs> he goes, he goes, why don't you guys just use your own computer for the presentation? It's probably easier. It's like, oh, sure, no problem, no problem. Plug in the computer, log into Google, and uh, like the presentation's in my Google Drive. And I can't log into my Google Drive. <laughs> and he's just like, you don't know your password? And I'm like, oh, no, like I think I remember it. And I'm sitting there like hammering 10 passwords locked out of my account. And so <laughs> like we were, we were pitching like a $50,000 like annual retainer for this like car client, like numbers that we're just like throwing out being like, yeah, like, here we go. This is it. Like big break. And so then I'm like, here's Zach. Why don't you do yours? I'm like, absolutely embarrassed as ever. Same thing happens to Zach. He's like locked out. Like can't get in, can't get in. <laughs> And so there's like 10 people in this meeting just staring at us like, all right, they're all 40, 50, 60 years old. These two like 22 year old kids walk in to like pitch them this new creative idea and they can't even log into their laptop. <laughs> and so we were just like, sit. I mean, you could only imagine like I'm getting red telling the story right now. Like we were just sitting there like shaking our heads like unbelievable. Like how did we do that? So that, that's like not, not as funny, but like just hands down embarrassing moment for sure. Um, but we, we've had some fun shoots together, Zach and I, over the years, Zach, Zach would creative direct some of them. We did one at a big, like uh, food festival place and they would make us all these like beer and drinks and stuff. And so Zach would just have to drink all of them. So by like the fifth restaurant we were on, Zach's like four vodka shots deep, like a couple cocktails, like <laughs> Zach's like videos looking great guys. And then the best part of that shoot was Zach was like, all conference or all state hockey player back in high school. So the last part of that shoot is we do these five or six restaurants. They all border this ice hockey rink in the middle. So the end of the shoot, 
is to get the skating footage. That's, oh, it's going to look so cool. We're going to skate around with a Ronin and get all these follow shots. Well, who's, who's the actor? Yeah. Zach. <laughs> Who's like, <laughs> who's like eight shots deep, couple cocktails in, and luck, luckily he was fine. But I mean, he's he's skidding, he's spinning, he's jumping around, just like tearing up the ice. And if you guys saw me, I'm like waddling, like with the run, and I'm like, slow down, like I can't ice skate for shit. So I'm just like sitting there at the other end of the ice, like what do I do? Um, but those are probably two like funny, like good production or like embarrassing stories, but. It's just, just part of learning and growing as, as you figure it out as an agency, I guess. Yeah. Those are always the fun ones. The, the ones, the way you screw up are the ones you remember, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we, we've been lucky so far that we haven't had anything terrible happen no, just yet. not yet. Not yet. It's yeah. going to happen at some point, yeah. though. You just got to smile and it's move abs- on and roll with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's inevitable. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you guys started, you, you said you were, what, 22 when you did that? Um, yeah, 22, pitch. 23. Yeah. So I, I just made a video a couple of weeks ago um, about being called a young creator and how I stopped calling myself a young creator. Um, and a quick little summary, the gist of it was like, I feel like that comes with a lot of negative connotations for people when you're like, I'm a young creator. And they're like, oh, well, immediately I think you don't have experience. Whereas like, you know, you could have eight years experience at that point or 10 years experience, easy. So, like, what what are your thoughts in terms of that, in terms of being called a young creator? I, yeah, I'm totally with you guys on it. I think it's kind of, like, it's not derogatory, but, like, it has kind of a negative, like, little stigma to it. I think, I think kind of the whole, like, creator verbiage has really become, like, oversaturated over the last maybe four or five years with, like, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all the social media outlets because now anyone with an iPhone and starts posting stuff is like, oh, I'm a creator, and it's like, oh – you know, and people are like, how many followers do you have? It's like, all right, so are followers determining the worth now? Or like, are they making a bunch of money? Like, how are we, how is the credibility and like trust gained? So I'm with you. Like, I don't like the term like young creator, like, you know, young photographer, videographer. And my other big one that I always tell people who are like, you know, whether they're going to college or they're just starting their film company. And I love what you guys did with starting the company and having products and systems around it with the video and the photo offering and the audio mastering is like find, find a good niche and then also like start a business. I hate when people call them the freelancer is the other term that like g- grinds my gears, like the young creator or the freelancer. Because if you're a freelancer, like there's no end game, right? Like you're always going to be John the freelancer. And they're like, oh, what's your rate? It's, you know, whatever an hour or whatever a day rate. It's like start a business because then you can already elevate your worth and your credibility instead of being John's video business, you know, versus, hey, I'm a freelancer. I have an Instagram. Here's my portfolio. Check it out. So that's kind of my, I guess, my take on it is um, just appearing professional. I think I think owning your business is like a huge part of it. And when Zach and I started taking like our business seriously, because like back in high school, I was like John Bach Productions. And then Zach was like <laughs> ZD Films or something, you know? Like, we're like, I'm a business owner, president, CEO, I do it all. Like, I'm the man. <laughs> so it's like, and that's how like everyone starts. And so many of my friends are still like, oh, I'm my name productions or videography company. So I'm like, just make a business, you know? Otherwise, they're gonna expect John to be at every shoot for the rest of his life. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's my take on it. But I don't know if that answered the question. <laughs> No, no, went down a rabbit hole on you. (laughs) I did the exact same thing. I had Frank Menken photography first, Mm -hmm. and I did that for like two years. And then I was like, why am I not getting work? And then we started for our media and now we're getting work. Yeah. It's almost like people are looking for businesses and not people or something. It's crazy. Yeah, right. It's wild how that works. (laughs) I like the name a lot too, by the way. I think it's I think it's catchy. Super catchy. Sorry? I like the name a lot, by the way. It's super catchy. Oh, oh yeah. thank you kindly. We mashed our names together and went, yep, that's good. Yep. Yep. See, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's, I mean, it seemed to work so far. It, it seemed has. to work so far. Yeah. Um, so you've had a couple years experience now in several different fields. Mm. But if you had to, if you had like two minutes to tell, tell someone who's just starting out, like they're, they're about to buy their first camera they're like, I want to be a photographer slash videographer. What would you tell them? Get a pack of Zoom transitions, orange teal lot, Sam Colder <laughs> vibes, and blast off. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hold on, wait. I gotta write that down. Give me yeah, two yeah. Orange teal lut pack. 
No, <laughs> <laughs> I joke, I joke. Um, yeah, I mean, the biggest advice I give to people when they're starting is like, A, for the person who's always like asking for a camera recommendation is like just practice. Like the more you shoot and the more different conditions you're in, I always used to think that was such a funny thing. When I started my company, I was like, oh, like I don't need to practice. But then again, like I'd been shooting since middle school and high school. So like my eye was trained to different lighting scenarios and shooting in daylight versus night and photography and video settings and things like that. So there's the technical side of it, which is like, Practice, get your quality up, learn, educate, grow. And then the other side is kind of what we were just talking about is like the business side and appearing professional. I think, I think a lot of times people focus on the wrong things when they start their business. They'll focus on the followers on Instagram or TikTok or YouTube and think, okay, if I have 10,000 followers, all the brands are going to run to my doorstep and offer me money for my videos and photos. And guess what? There's millions of creators with 10,000 followers. So that's just not the case. So it's a lot of focusing on your sales efforts and how you're going to get business and what your product is similar to how you guys are doing it and how we're doing it and saying, okay, this is what we're really good at. Let's focus a lot of our time and energy there towards music or drone tours. Um, and just putting in the work of the sales emails and the outreach and this and that. I think a lot of people who want to be full-time creators can, I think everyone can, if they want to. And I've even in our course, that's why like some of the people that are blowing up in our course and are doing over six figures in business and stuff, they're in Chicago and I don't see them as competition. I'm like, yo, we all can win here. There's plenty of business to be had in the media industry because it's growing so rapidly. So I think just focusing on what's going to get you business and allow you to become a full-time business or full-time creator rather than just hoping, wishing, wanting if I get posted by this account or if I get enough followers, then the business will roll in because I think that's what a lot of young creators think. And it, it's kind of not the case unless you get enough followers where the brands are paying for your attention and your followers rather than the quality of your media, right? Your photos and your videos. So I don't know if that helps, but that's always the biggest thing I tell people is like, just make sure you focus in the right areas. Cause I think, yeah. I even think there's tons of kids I know that are talented high school filmers and they're 16 or 17. I'm like, this guy could go full time right now if he wanted to. Like his quality of work is amazing. He just needs that business mm -hmm. side and that business acumen. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. So how did you go about starting those two businesses from like, from the idea of them, you know, be you becoming a partnership and it going from there to like getting your first clients? Like how did that, yeah. how did that happen? Yeah, so with Doula Creative Shop, Zach had started it and had a couple like family friend referral clients um, right away that we kind of worked in with. So it's the easiest low hanging fruit, right? Like, who do you know? Who does my family know? Who do my friends know? Hey, I launched a business, like help me out. Um, so that was kind of the first, the first part of it. And Zach had some really great connections and really good business there. And then on the other side of it was figuring out how to get people that didn't know about us, you know, in front of them. So then we started running Facebook ads or Instagram ads or those email campaigns and just cold calling people, just kind of scrapping up everything. But I mean, the first, the first year was like just straight up referral business most of the way. I mean, this guy knows that guy and they started a company and I shot a bunch of weddings our first year. I shot like five or six weddings. And so I was making money off those that we were dumping into the company and just gra grabbing everything we could get. I don't, I don't know if weddings are a good business in Australia, but they made some great money for us at the get-go and they were awesome. <laughs> and they're not too bad. <laughs> yeah. I, weddings, awesome. weddings are always the one thing I've always said I won't shoot. Good for you. Yeah. That's my you. that is my veto is weddings. I shot a bunch and I was like I was like I could be really good at this, but I was like I think I get tired of it pretty quick. And so after that like yeah. first year or two, I limit myself to like three a year, and it's like friends and family only. But then I have friends like in LA who would they were like they're like well I can shoot one wedding a month, make two or three grand off that wedding, and then do more passion projects in between and stuff. So kind of using it to like climb the ladder a little bit. But yeah, you definitely got to have a taste for it because. I'm, I'm a bit over it at this point. <laughs> yeah. No, my thing with weddings was always like, you get booked and then you become the wedding guy and then you get booked two years in advance. And then the day that you say, I don't want to do weddings anymore, you still have to do seven weddings over the next yeah. two years. <laughs> yeah, well, he used to do them and he's my friend and I know him though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, oh, Frank, okay. <laughs> Yeah, fine, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. I'm only shooting it on my 550D, though. You're not getting good quality. Yeah, yeah. I'll shoot on my <laughs> iPhone in the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
Um, all right, we're we're kind of we're getting to the end here. I think I can't read what that time says, but I can't read it's it. It's fine. Um, it, th- there's always there's always something that you want to talk about but haven't been asked. Mm. What is a story or a thing or something that you've always wanted to talk about or bring up that you haven't had a chance yet? Oh man, that's a really good question. That's a really really good question for a podcast. Oh man. Something I've always wanted to talk about. I don't know. I mean, my biggest thing, and it's not a common question that comes up, but like my, my biggest kind of like stance stance on life, I guess, that I don't scream from the mountaintops every day other than like close conversations with my friends is just like spreading positivity to a ton of people. I think a lot of people, young or old, can walk around in life and just they can be sad, depressed, have anxiety, you know, just have all these thoughts built up in our head. And everything in this world these days is like competing for our attention, right? Like I look at my phone a million times a day, like not just cause I'm in the social media world, but like, cause that's human nature now. So I think just like trying to disconnect and just free your mind and just be more positive and impact others in that way is something that I really strive to do. I'm not like trying to plug myself, but I guess my wish and my goal is that just like more people were like that. And like we talked about at the start, just, you know, gassing people up and everyone hyping each other up. There's so much negativity running around in the world and especially the last year with COVID and the pandemic and everyone screaming at each other. I'm just like, we live a pretty cool life and we're all pretty blessed to be here on this planet and having fun. So that's kind of my, my goal or my mantra for everyone that, you know, I would, I would encourage everyone to take up on similar to how you guys are. It's just good energy. That's, that's a very solid goal. I like that yeah. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, Joe, do you have anything you want to ask before we finish up? I don't think so. No, it's all it. my question. You got it covered. <laughs> I'll send you. The, I'll send ask. you the build for FPV parts. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'll be waiting. We'll be waiting yeah, for yeah. the invoice. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I have to ask before we finish. I've been. I've been eyeing it off the whole time in the background on your desk. Is that a cup or is that actually a seventy to two hundred lens? It is a seventy to two hundred. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because I, I was unsure if it was, like, the fake mugs that you get, like the travel cups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm a video guy. There you go. See? This real 7200 and then a real FPV drone for you guys. Ooh. Oh, wow. That's a solid way to end it. Yeah, there you go. So that's go. the GoPro one you've got there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Black Magic stays with Ilio. Show it to that camera for you guys, too. There you go. <laughs> Bang, yeah. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, th- um, thanks a ton, guys. If you, do you want to send us that video of the Black Magic teardown, and we can chuck it in the description for people to check out? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I can send you guys that. Awesome. awesome. I'll make Let's a Dropbox, and I'll make a Dropbox, and send all that stuff you guys want. Sounds awesome. We're definitely down. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, we'll finish up there. Where can people find you, John? Uh, John Parker Bach on all social medias, and then Indoor Drone Tours on all social medias as well. Keep it pretty simple. Um, and yeah. Awesome. Hmm. And final words. Nothing big, man. <laughs> Nothing big. Appreciate you guys having me on and best of luck to you guys. I'll be following the journey. And if I can help in any way, FPV business wise, production wise, just holler at me. I'm always here. 100% man. 100%. Thank you so much. Um, we have a little, little tradition on the show here mm. for our guests. Um, <laughs> at the end of our shows, we do this thing where we say bye, 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 and then we finish the episode and we play the outro music. Mm-hmm. Whenever we have a guest on, we get the guest to say the final bye. Now, normally we get them to press the button as well, but unfortunately you're on the other side of the planet, so that's not going to work. <laughs> 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 but we will get you to say the last bye. You can say it however you want. doesn't matter. Just smash it out. I'll hit the button and then we'll fade it out. So I, I do my bye after you guys go. Yeah. Yep. So it'll go me, then it'll go Joe, then it'll go you. And then we'll finish up. Cool. All right, easy. Awesome. Are you ready? I'll um I'll do the outro. All right. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Fro Show or watching it. We will see you next week. Mm-hmm. Joe, where can people find us on social media? Uh, Instagram at Fro Media and Twitter at the Fro Media. Awesome. Thank you so much. That was episode fifty. <laughs> In two weeks, we're going to be celebrating a year, so make sure you come for that episode. Oh, yeah. We will see you next week. Yep. Bye. 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 That was a, that was a solid bye. That was a good bye. <laughs> All right. Goodbye.